Hey, it's Ken here from OK Portugal, and you're watching the very first episode of Portugal City Life. I'm in Lisbon, and we arrived yesterday. Uh, we decided that we wanted to come through here and uh, just explore the place a bit. We didn't really have a plan. It's not really like a tour guide or anything like that. We just wanted to get here and figure out the best way to move around the city and see if we can find some cool things. It all started yesterday, and this is where it began. So I'm stood outside uh, the Castelo Branco uh, bus station. Uh, just in the background, just down in that direction, is the train station. And, um, and over here we've got where all the buses are supposed to be. Now the bus I'm catching is at 11.30, uh, which is in four minutes time, and I don't see any bus here yet. So I'm hoping that the bus is just late and that it hasn't already left or something like that. Yeah, when I went to go and have a look inside the actual uh, terminal where you buy the tickets, the board that's supposed to show you where the bus is or what number the bus is, doesn't work. So it's gonna be interesting. Ah, oh, there we go, check it out. Okay, Flix bus, that's the one. So this weather's pretty wild. I, I don't know why, but I thought that I was gonna go to Lisbon, it was gonna be nice and sunny, uh, but it's raining. Hopefully it's not raining in Lisbon. So it's pretty cool, you basically uh, download this app and you can buy your tickets through the app. It's got a little QR code there. And as you can see, the conductor or the bus driver, he's, he's scanning uh, all the QR codes and that basically allocates you your seat and gets you to Lisbon. Now what's really amazing about catching the bus to Lisbon instead of the train is that these tickets are as low as 5.99, so 5 euros 99 uh, to basically drive all the way from here to Lisbon. The train takes about three and a half hours. Um, this bus only takes two hours and 20 minutes, so it's much quicker. In fact, I don't even think we can drive there that, that quickly, so I reckon this bus is going to be moving quite fast. So we made it, we are here. And now I just have to figure out where I'm going and what I'm doing. So this is the second time that I've been in Lisbon. Um, and uh, again, I don't actually have a plan for what I'm gonna be doing, but I have booked a hotel. I've actually booked a really special one. Uh, the last time that we came here, we booked like a regular hotel. And today I thought I'd go for something slightly different. Now, I didn't realize the weather was gonna be this bad, but uh, I've got something pretty cool. I think you're gonna wanna check it out. So Lisbon's a lot busier than it was uh, the last time that I came. Last time I came it was school holidays and apparently for school holidays most people uh, go on holiday and leave Lisbon. So let's get to the hotel, it's only a kilometre away. So I think I'm going to walk and then uh, I'm going to put my bags down and then it's time to grab something to chow. I'm starving. So Google Maps is giving it a 17 minute walk and uh, I just found one of these. It's an electric bike. Uh, basically you scan a QR code, uh, you get the Lime app and, uh, and then you should be able to ride the bike. So yeah, I've never actually used this before. I just downloaded the app and uh, well, let's see how it works. Right, so here's the app, here's the bike. I guess I hit the scan button. And uh, there we go. Yeah, I've been living the farm life for the last three years. And so I haven't really caught up with all of this. <laughs> I can't get the lock undone. It's got some kind of a lock here and it's not unlocking. I'm not sure what that's all about. Oh, there we go. It's unlocked. Brilliant. So if you uh, follow my channel, you know that I do lots of cycling around, usually in central Portugal. Uh, this is the first time I've been cycling in Lisbon. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Okay, well, I'm all sorted. I don't have to catch taxis now. So it's not only e-bikes, but you can also get these e-scooters. This one's by a company called Link. So I'm guessing you just download the app and you do the same thing. Scan a QR code and then just go. But for now, I'm really digging this bike. This is good fun, man. This is an awesome way to get around Lisbon. Way better than bringing your own e-bike and then having to charge it. And uh, I think it's quite cheap as well. I'm actually not too sure what the price is. And I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. So it's pretty cool. There's lots of uh, cycle paths all over the place. And uh, yeah, I'm getting used to this now. This is a very nice way of getting around. So the original plan was um, I wanted to go to Lisbon for a day and just cruise around and film some cool stuff. And uh, I was kind of expecting it to be sunny. I wanted to go down to Cascais, go to the beach and do all sorts of stuff. Uh, but that doesn't look like that's happening at the moment. I also wanted to go for a sunset cruise today. And I don't know if a sunset cruise is happening either because, uh, well, it's like raining and cloudy and all of that. But anyway, bear with me. We are going to do some cool stuff. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, I've just ended my ride and uh, it costs 165. So I think it's a little bit cheaper if you ride longer distances. Um, there's like an unlocking fee. I only rode one kilometer. Um, but yeah, that's not, not too bad. It saved me 20 minutes of walking and uh, only cost me 165 or something like that. But now we get to a really cool part. I've arrived at my hotel. 
It's directly behind me in this marina. <laughs> so this is the place, it's called Tagus Marina and uh, I'm about to check in. So I thought to myself, a hotel room, I've stayed in loads of hotel rooms. What I haven't done is stayed on a boat um, as a hotel room. So this over here is a 12 foot wide and I'm not sure, I think it's like 50 foot long or something, uh, wide beam narrow boat. And uh, this is what I'm gonna be staying in for the night. Check this out. So we've got a nice little seating area on the back here where I can chill, but obviously it's all covered in rain because it's raining today, unfortunately. And then we have the doors leading in. Um, we've got some steps going down. And then this is huge inside. Honestly, I was not expecting it to be this big. So on the side over here, we have a TV. We've got some cabinets and some storage and stuff like that. And uh, we've got an air conditioning unit. Check this out. So we've actually got air con there. Um, on the side here we have like, this basically pulls out into a big double, and, uh, but I'm not going to be using that. There's an actual bedroom. We've got some nice dining over here, we've got a kitchen over here. Um, got pretty much everything that we need. I think this is a fridge, yeah, check that out. A little cooker, a little oven, very, very nice. And then we go down in this direction, there's a little flap, check this out. Right, come on, flap. Wait, I think I opened up the wrong one. There we go, that's the one. And it shows you the outside world. Look, there's a little fish down there just jumping. That is so cool. Right, and then we continue down this way. We have the bathroom. Oh no, wait, this is the bedroom. Sorry, I've only just, you know, I'm still getting my bearings. So there's a double bed in here. And we've got, where's the light switch? I wonder if this is a chair. No, I think the light switch is in here. Is this the light switch? Yeah, oh, there we go. So we've got um, a little vanity unit over here. We've got some, some storage. Oh no, this is actually for the shower, I reckon. I don't think that's storage. I think this is the storage over here. Yeah, oh, look at that, huge cupboards. Huge cupboards and drawers. But very nice, eh? Look at that. So bunk beds. I'm not staying on a bunk bed, so don't worry about that. It goes further. And now we have the bathroom. Look how cool this is. So we've got the shower unit over here, we've got the toilet, and then we've got the little sink vanity. We have some kind of a heating system here. I wonder if that's connected to the air conditioning. I'm not sure. So yeah, it's very nice. It's actually quite nice and spacious as well. And it's not all pokey. You know, you can actually walk around in here. And then I saved the best for last. Oh, wait, check this out. We've got some storage over here. Um, and then the best for last, the master bedroom. How cool is this? So we've got a nice big bed on here. This looks like a, um, this is like a king. Check, it's like two singles pushed together. So this is a king, or a super king, sorry. This is a big bed. Uh, we've got lots of storage on the sides. And then we have windows that lead out onto the nose of the boat. So you can actually go out here. Let's go out here. Let's have a look. Ow, oh, just banged my head. All right, let's try not banging my head again. And here we go. Look at this. So this is gonna be my home. And it's all quite nice and peaceful here on the marina. Not much noise or anything like that. Yeah, I've stayed in Loads of different hotels all around the world, uh, but I've never stayed in a boat hotel, which is really cool. Now I have actually stayed on narrow boats, but uh, not wide beams like this. My mom and Jeremy, or my mom and stepdad who live in South Africa, hey guys, I know you're watching, um, they've got a narrow boat in London. And uh, over the last 15 years or so, like I've joined them on lots of like different boat trips um, down the Thames and they've, I mean, they've even been all the way up to Wales, I think. So I'm quite familiar with these narrow boats and I really love them. So I'm really looking forward to spending some time here. Right, it's time to go out, get some food. So um, I had a bit of a rushed morning. Couldn't find my passport. You know, you have to carry like ID, like your passport around with you. Um, and uh, yeah, had a bit of a broken night's sleep last night. I, I don't know why, but at, at the moment, this seems to be happening to me a lot where my sleep's getting messed up. So uh, yeah, had a bit of a rushed morning, didn't have breakfast. And then, uh, 
and I haven't had lunch. It's now quarter past four, so I'm gonna have breakfast now. Breakfast, lunch. <laughs> so I think right around the marina here, there's a whole bunch of like restaurants and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna have a look and see what I can get. Wow, look how cool this is. It looks like some kind of electric. Yeah, it's electric engine. Very, very nice. Huh. I absolutely love the sea. I love water and uh, I love boats. So it's really cool to not be on the farm for a little bit and to actually smell that fresh air again, to be around boats. I'm loving it. So this is pretty sweet. This is called Tele Cabin Lisboa. It's a whole bunch of like little cable cars. And they basically cruise from here all the way down in that direction. Now I'm absolutely starving, so I'm not hopping on one of those yet. I think there's some restaurants just ahead of me here. I'm gonna get something to eat, and then we're gonna cruise around a little bit. So I'm at a place called Honest Greens. Got myself a beer. It's actually a pretty cool joint. I came here the last time that I was in Lisbon and I had a breakfast. And it was a really good breakfast. So I'm back, and this time I'm gonna have some lunch <laughs> and a beer. And dinner is served. We have some medium rare beef with um, a salad. All right, I'm feeling a little bit more human now. Um, I don't recommend uh, staying awake the whole day, traveling and not eating until like 5 p.m. But I feel human again. Uh, this place is pretty good. It's in Lisbon, it's near the aquarium and it's called Honest Greens. Check it out. So I'm really liking the look of these cable cars. Um, I think I'm gonna hop on one of those now. I'm not sure exactly where it's gonna end up taking me, but I think we're just gonna hop on and find out. It's all part of the adventure. All right, I've got my tickets. I'm gonna climb in this thing now. Here we go. Well, this is pretty cool. So I'm guessing this, um, this door is gonna close. Oh, there we go, perfect. I just didn't wanna like be high up in the air and have the door open. Jeez, it's suddenly starting to accelerate now. It kind of goes around the corner slowly and then it picks up speed. Wow, look at this. There's like a whole lock system here for the water levels in there. Well, this is really quite something. I got a feeling that I should have done this during sunset. <laughs> Oh well, I'll have to come back another time. I definitely recommend checking this out. Now we're preparing for landing. <laughs> Go. Right, let's grab my bags. Let's get out of here. Well, that was pretty awesome. Wow, look at this fancy hotel. It looks like something you'd find in Dubai. So the plan was to come to Lisbon, go around, do some cool stuff, and then on the day that I arrive, it's all like windy and it's rainy and there's clouds and it's cold and um, yeah, not exactly ideal. I think a good idea is gonna be to rent one of these things. I don't know, I don't know how you check if it has any battery or anything. But I think a good idea is going to be to rent one of these. I've got the Lime app. And then we can cruise around on a little adventure. Right, I scanned it and we're in. It says here, kick, uh, using the kickstand. Uh, okay, it's got some rules and regulations. Now, I've never actually used one of these things before. Um, so I'm just going to have to figure it out. Hopefully I don't take a tumble because I've got my expensive camera in the bag here. And I don't really feel like falling, to be honest. So yeah, wish me luck. I'm gonna have to put the camera away for like the first couple of minutes while I get used to this thing. <laughs> All right, sadly, I'm unable to film and ride at the same time. If I film with my left hand, I can't use the brakes. And if I film with my right hand, I can't use the throttle. So that was good fun. Uh, it's a bit awkward to ride. I'm not really used to it. Like I've got like a bit of a balance problem. Uh, long story short, I damaged my inner ear. And uh, so yeah, so I can have problems like like in cars or planes or something like that. And on that, I do feel like a bit, um, I don't know, like a little bit floaty. On bicycles, I'm pretty good. And running around, I'm pretty good. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure if those scooters are the right thing for me. Also, that trip that I just took was um, about six and a half euros. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if it's more expensive than the bicycle or what the story is. So this is pretty cool. This is a big boat called Santa Maria Manuela. Uh, it's a four-masted schooner. And it was launched in 1937 
This was a cod fishing ship, uh, but now they kind of use it for um, sales training, uh, sailing holidays, environmental expeditions and stuff like that. It's really beautiful. Right, so I'm going to have to do some editing while I'm here. I'm actually going to be doing it tonight and I realized that I didn't have a card reader. I brought everything else with me. Um, and hopefully this card reader is going to read all of the cards I've got because uh, I actually just need a big card reader. It feels pretty crazy being back in the big city. Uh, you know, living on the farm, it's so peaceful. There's nothing going on there apart from some badges and some foxes and a couple of tractors coming past with some sheep. And here I've got all of this madness around me. So these lime bikes are very few and far between. Um, so yeah, this is the one that I've been using the whole day. And when I look on the app, there, there's hardly any of them. Yeah, there, there seems to be loads of the other bikes and scooters and stuff like that. But when it comes to um, these uh, lime ones, there's hardly any of them. And I've only got the lime app. Maybe I should sign up to one of the other apps. I think it's called Bolt or something like that. But yeah, for today, for today, it's been pretty liberating to find these things, that there's different ways of getting around the city. Obviously, you can get a really cheap sort of uh, bus pass that gets you trams and things like that. But it's quite nice to just be able to hop on and off bicycles and things like that. Right, I'm pretty hungry again. Uh, do I have my phone? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm gonna go to a sushi restaurant. It's really highly rated on uh, Google Maps. So I'm gonna go and check it out and uh, I'll let you guys know what it's like. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome up here at the marina at nighttime. All of the city lights. Very, very, very nice. Man, it feels so weird to be walking around in a city again. Um, it's been like three years. So, yeah, I'm not used to it. It's pretty cool though. It's very empty, but I'm probably just not in a very busy part. I don't know. Still, it's pretty cool. Now I'm a big fan of sushi, but um, Jean is not that big a fan. And so I don't really eat it that often. Um, but uh, yeah, whenever I get an opportunity, then I go for it. Now we're talking, look at this. A big pint of Estrella Galicia. Very, very nice. I haven't drunk this in a while. Cheers. Oh, that's pretty good. Here in Portugal, I'm only drinking like Sagres and Superbock and stuff like that. So it's quite nice to try something different in the change. So on their menu, they have this all you can eat. Um, but basically, you can't choose what it is. They just basically bring you out this big platter. It looks like there's a bunch of nigiri and different rolls and things like that. But there's no sashimi. So I have gone for, um, I've just gone for like a mix of stuff, just to start with, and uh, I have no idea where it is. I think it's on this page. Uh, no, it's not on that page. Where is it? Oh well, it's in there somewhere. Oh wait, 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 it's on this page. I don't know, I think their menu's falling apart. But I've gone for this, the combination sushi. So I couldn't resist, I had to go for some more. Uh, these look like braided prawns, I'm not sure. With uh, avocado and the roll of sesame. And I think there's a little bit of uh, fish eggs on the top of that. Ah, oh, home sweet home. I have had way too much sushi. I'm absolutely stuffed, but now it's time to do um, a little bit of the edit, I've got to figure out exactly what kind of footage i got and how I'm going to tell the story. And tomorrow we've got a big day. Tomorrow is going to be the day where we cruise around. So hopefully the weather's good. Good morning. Let's get some air in here. Oh wow, look at that sunshine. Yeah. Amazing. Right, let's get this day started. This was a really nice night on this boat. Super comfortable. The bed was super comfortable and uh, a really great experience. I'm really glad that we chose this over a hotel room. It's like having your own apartment. 
and what a great way to wake up. So last night I managed to get a little bit of my edit done. Um, I don't really like working on a laptop because the actual screen is so small, like, you know, to see the timeline and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I got some stuff done. Well, this is really quite something. Now I've got a better idea of uh, what we're going to do today and how the story is going to unfold. Um, I think I'm going to head into like the historic part of the city and we're going to see what that has for us. First of all, I need breakfast. I need to pack my bags. I need to get out of here. I need to check out and uh, yeah, let's do it. So if you're looking for something a little bit unusual uh, in Lisbon and you don't want to stay in a regular hotel, then definitely check it out, Tagus Marina. Um, they also do long-term rentals, so you can actually rent one of these narrowboats or wide beam narrowboats for 1,450 euros a month. Um, that includes all your electricity, free Wi-Fi, and it's actually really fast Wi-Fi, um, you know, everything. So the only thing the boats don't have is a laundry, but just down the road, about 300 meters, is a laundromat where you can drop clothing off or you can do it yourself. So yeah, pretty cool. A nice, um, a nice way to stay in Lisbon without having to buy furniture and sign long-term rental agreements and stuff like that. Um, and it's good fun. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's my trusty steed. It's still here from last night. Perfect. Let's, uh, let's unlock this thing. Yeah, I didn't realize at first, but this actually folds down into like a phone holder so you can have Google Maps on while you're cruising. Yeah, so I'm not sure why, but there's not very many of these um, Bolt bicycles. But also another thing that I noticed is it doesn't charge you any unlocking fee. Like that scooter, or well, the e-scooter that I took yesterday, was like €6.50 for a couple of kilometers. It, it was crazy because I think I had to pay like some big locking fee or something like that. Uh, where, like where is this? You just sort of hop on and uh, just charges you $0.15 cents a kilometer. So that's not bad. It's a much nicer day today. The sun is shining, it's clear blue skies. It's a little bit chilly. I think maximum temperature is only going to be 22 degrees and uh, there's a little bit of wind blowing at the moment. So, but so much better than yesterday. So my bike's developed a little bit of a squeak. I can't say it's not annoying. <laughs> So Google Maps wants me to go along this big busy road over here when I've got this amazing beachfront. So I'm going to ignore Google Maps and just go along the beachfront. It looks way better. It's a very cool way of seeing the city. When you're on a bicycle, you are sort of connected to everything and you can see everything and hear everything, smell everything. Whereas if I was in a taxi or like a metro or something like that, you're completely disconnected. Um, but yeah, it's been a really good trip to Lisbon because my first trip was just kind of like stay in a hotel, catch a few Ubers. Um, but this one is more, uh, more sort of connected on the ground. Here we go, this is more like it. Wow, look at all these old buildings. Very, very cool. Okay, let's park up and walk around. So that's not too bad. That was uh, uh, only 4.35 for 28 minutes on the bike. So I've just been walking around aimlessly and uh, I've just found something. It's definitely been calling me. Check this out. Who would have guessed it? A beer museum. Well, I'm definitely gonna have to pop in there and have a look. So these guys have a beer museum in the restaurant somewhere. I'm not sure, I think you go through this entrance. And uh, they've got something like 55 craft Portuguese beers. Now, sadly, I'm not gonna be going to the beer museum, but I will be having a beer somewhere else just now. Uh, the reason being, because the tour right now isn't in English, and I have to wait quite a while before the English one. Don't have enough time. I wanna show you guys some more of Portugal, or Lisbon for that matter. One of the things I wanna do is get onto one of these trams. And I hear that there's a really famous one up here somewhere that we can get onto. Look at this shop. Trejadas Finas de Sintra. This is a type of um, special dessert from Sintra. It's like a little cheesecake with cinnamon. Um, and this shop, they sell them. It's quite a quirky little shop. 
How cool is this? Obrigado. There it is. All right, let's give this a try. Very interesting. I was kind of expecting more like cheese because uh, they said cheesecake, uh, but it's very nice. It's very, very sweet. A little bit of cinnamon. It's definitely worth a try. So now I'm in search of a very famous tram. It's called tram number 28. And uh, I think it's about almost a kilometer away. If I carry on walking, I'll find its first stop. Apparently it takes you through like the historic center of Lisbon. I really feel like I'm there actually, looking at all these buildings. All right, now this is starting to look familiar. This is where I stayed the last time I was in Lisbon. And I recognize it because there's the dude on the horse, Dom Joao. And this is the hotel that we stayed in, me and my sister. Now the tram that I want to catch is called 28. And I think we're getting close. As you can see here, there's the yellow tram with 28 written on its plate. And uh, they sell a bunch of these yellow trams. Oh, wow, this is quite pretty. There's a castle up there. So I think I'm getting close to where this tram is. Google Maps says it's just over there. Um, it's actually quite cool. If I look around here, there's like some hills and you can see all the houses perched up on the top. I'm not sure what's going on over here, but a whole bunch of birds have just come flying past me and there's just more and more and more arriving. No one threw food or anything down here, so it's a bit strange. Yeah, I think it's only a matter of time until one of these uh, pigeons crap on me. <laughs> ah, I think I see the tram. And here it is. This looks like tram 28. So, I'm not sure how it works. I'm not sure if you buy a ticket from the guy or what the story is. Right, so I've just figured out that if you want to get onto tram 28, you have to stand in an incredibly long queue. And I seriously don't have the patience for that. Uh, the queue starts over there and continues all the way across, all the way down to the tram over there. So um, there's absolutely no chance that I'm going to be catching one of these anytime soon. So we'll try that another time. Uh, for now, I'm going to hop on the underground and uh, I'm going to go somewhere else. So I haven't caught any trains or anything this trip. Um, because I wanted to try like different vibes, you know, like the scooters and the e-bikes. But I've tried loads of those, so let's have a look at what the underground looks like now. There we go. I don't actually know where I'm going yet. I still haven't even figured it out, but that's the beauty of just doing what you want to do when you feel like it. <laughs> so this is the green line. Uh, the airport's over here. This is where we are. Rossio is where my sister and I went before. I think I'm going to carry on in this direction because I think this is going to take me down to the coast. Yeah, it's one o'clock and as you can see there's not very many people here. Nice and quiet. If we were in uh, London now or another big city, these underground uh, stations would be completely round. It's lunchtime, it's Friday, and yeah, nice and quiet. train is actually a little bit more full uh, than the station but still there's plenty of room in fact if I wanted there are seats all right so on the Lisbon map uh, this is where we are now Caix de Sodre um, I'm not really sure what's out there but let's go and have a look this trip is more of a sort of unplanned impromptu thing uh, I'm sure you know some of the things are going to work some of the things aren't going to work but uh, yeah, it's just really been nice just walking around, not having any sort of times or anything to be anywhere and just you know, just do what you want to do when you want to do it. Yeah, I mean, I do say that I don't have any times to do anything or be anywhere, but actually we do have to be all the way back up here at Orient uh, at about five o'clock. I think that's when the uh, bus is leaving. And if I miss the bus, then I think there's a train just after that. But worst case scenario, I miss both of those and I stay another night in Lisbon. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> 
Come on. I didn't like my ticket for a second there. Got a little bit worried. So after a bunch of climbing, we are out, we're free. And uh, yeah, I haven't seen this place before. Wow, look at these beautiful old buildings. This is a pretty cool looking place. It says Time Out Market Lisboa. I have no idea where I am or where I'm going, but it uh, looks interesting. Let's go and have a look at a market. At least I think it's a market. So it looks like they've got a traditional market and a timeout market. I have no idea what the difference is. Um, okay, well, let's have a look at traditional first and see what that has to offer. Bearing in mind it's quarter past one, so I don't know if like the market closes down or what the story is. Okay, yeah, it's traditional market. I can smell there's like fish, there's fruit. Um, you get spaces like this in central Portugal as well, that, you know, that we've seen. Cool. Well, I'm definitely not here for fruit. So um, I think some lunch, a nice cold beer, and uh, that'll sort us out. So let's check out this one. This is called Time Out Market. So, yeah. That's how they got pasta donatas, a whole bunch of food. Super busy, wow. Okay, well, let's just go in the direction that isn't as busy and have a look. Can't believe how many people are in here. This is incredible. Hmm, I think if I try and eat here, I'm probably gonna wait forever. It's a lot of people to serve. And to be honest, I don't really like being around this many people. So, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a look at what's going on. We've got uh, all these different like lunch joints. This is like a hot dog joint. Uh, what is this? Tobacconist, donuts, all sorts of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna find something a little bit less uh, intense, uh, where there's less people and uh, maybe some fresh air. This is definitely much more of a touristy joint over here. Absolutely packed. Wow, I just love these blue tiles. Imagine these blue tiles on our little swimming pool outside. How cool does this little street look with all these little umbrellas, all these restaurants? So this place is called Restaurante Rio Grande. It says that it was uh, established in 1923. Traditional kitchen. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have some lunch. Looking forward to it. I've missed breakfast again. It's been two days now that I've missed breakfast. At least today I'm not gonna miss lunch as well. But yeah, this place has a really nice vibe. Lots of people, lots of buzz. And uh, I love the decor. The first course is served. Mm. Oh yeah, perfect. Compliments to the chef. Well, so far it's been a pretty good trip. Um, I mean, I arrived kind of latish yesterday, uh, but we've been up to a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, it's almost two o'clock now, so I'm not sure um, how much more stuff we're gonna be able to cram in today, because I do wanna try and see if I can catch the train home, or the bus, um, but it's a beautiful day. I've had a really good time, and uh, I hope you guys haven't minded this impromptu Lisbon visit, you know, like there's been no plan, we've just been flying by the seat of our pants, and uh, yeah. I've enjoyed it. And dinner is served. We have some lamb chops, some chips. It looks like they've, um, I don't know, it looks like the oil wasn't hot enough when they put the chips in because you can see like how the oil sunk in. But I'm sure it'll still be tasty. But I love lamb chops. All right, let's try one of these chips first because they look like all of the oil sunk in, which is a bad sign. It means that the oil wasn't hot enough. But they're actually really tasty. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. There's a whole bunch of chops as well. That hit the spot nicely. Uh, you know I love steak. Well, I think second to steak is definitely lamb chops. But anyway, I thought that I had all the time in the world, but I actually don't. Uh, it's half past two now. And uh, well, I've got to be in Orient Station by half past three so I can catch a train back. So I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna catch an Uber. <laughs> Right, so I'm catching an Uber because I can't really be bothered right now to do a bus or a tram or anything like that after lunch, you know. Four minutes away. So this is like the start of uh, hopefully very many Portugal City Life videos. Um, it's all gonna be about um, basically like visiting cities like Lisbon and Porto and uh, Faro and all of the different Portuguese cities, or like the big ones and the smaller ones. And uh, cruising around, seeing what they have to offer and 
Lisbon is not done yet. I mean, I've just scratched the surface really. Ne like next time I think I'm gonna plan it a bit better and actually uh, know exactly where I'm going as opposed to just kind of like, you know, throwing darts on a map. <laughs> but uh, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. And um, well, we're not actually done yet. I've still got to get home. All right. Okay. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, okay. Excellent. Over there, this is Commerce Square, or Commercial Square. So these three ships here are basically um, from different countries, and there's how many people? 5,000? The three, the three are with 5,000 people. Wow, okay, well that'll explain all of the people around here today. Yeah. Amazing. And normally they come from uh, Italy, from uh, Marseille in France, okay. uh, and Barcelona. Ah, okay. That's that makes sense, because uh, at the restaurant I was just at, there was, uh, yeah, that was the three accents, yeah. It's, uh, uh, how you say, trip in the Medi Mediterranean. Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. So that was a very nice and easy Uber ride. It would have taken me a lot longer if I had um, caught trams and buses and things like that, so yeah. Um, but anyway, very interesting guy. He's got a, an Instagram page. He's a relationship coach. He's got like 15,000 followers, and he's actually just been on TV so that's pretty cool i've started following him maybe you guys can check him out as well uh i'm gonna go into the station now and get myself a ticket and then i've got to hop on a train yeah i just realized that i don't have to go in there and buy a ticket i can just use the app so i've just gone onto the app and there it is just bought myself a ticket easy peasy yeah on this whole trip it's uh it's amazing to see how in three years everything's become so digital and uh, there's just like apps for everything now you don't really have to deal with people anymore you don't even have to get into taxis or buses or trains anymore. You can literally just like hop onto these little electric scooters and bikes and things like that. Uh, yeah, it's been eye opening. It's been a really cool trip. So that Uber saved me a lot of time. I've got a lot of time to burn, about an hour or so. So I think I'm going to get myself something to drink. And uh, I see that they've got some charging points over here. I desperately need to charge my cameras. Obrigado. So I feel a bit bad. I ordered a beer and uh, the keg ran out, so this guy's had to go through a huge mission just to get this beer for me. That is perfect. Thanks so much, Thank man. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Cheers. All right. I wanted to sit here because it's got an electric plug, but there's no more plugs. Uh, actually, it's got two USB ports, and, that, and that's all I need. So I've got 45 minutes to burn, and then um, we catch the train, and then, uh, yeah, and then it's going to be back to Castello Branco, and I hop straight onto the edit, and then you guys are going to get to watch this on Sunday. Cheers. And just like that, our story ends just where it began. And uh, yeah, we're on our way back now to Castello Branco. We're about to hop on the train. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. And uh, I think the next time I go to Lisbon, I'm gonna be a little bit more organized and prepared. And I'm actually gonna have some kind of itinerary. But I've really enjoyed having no plan and just kind of like figuring out what to do, when to do it and stuff like that. So it is still possible to travel around Portugal in that way. So I've just realized that I've caught a train that stops at 23 stations before it gets to uh, Castelo Branco. So this is not ideal. Uh, normally the train that I catch just goes straight there. And uh, normally there's like a first class section and it has like a, um, like a food cart. And you can order drinks there and food and stuff. And I normally hang out in there, look out the window, watch the world go by. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm not on that train today. So it's been a great trip, but now like the last part of it's not so great. <laughs> Well, that wraps up this week's episode. I really hope you've enjoyed it and uh, be sure to tune in next week, same time for the next episode. Lots of love, everyone. Have a great weekend. Ciao.